Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. The next 10 minutes are inspired by the coming year, baby. God bless it. Welcome to the engine. Twenty twenty, kind of a kick in the face. <laughs> There's no denying that. And that doesn't mean everybody did poorly. I was speaking with a with a good friend of mine the other day, and he was telling me how he actually had a really good year professionally. Now I trained jujitsu with this guy, and he's a he's a pro. Okay, so he's a pro at training. He's a pro at at his job. He sells medical supplies and stuff. And Again, he did really well this year. He was in a he was in a line of work in the medical industry that did not suffer immensely, and his clients were still purchasing things and they were still producing, so everything went well. But we were both talking about how difficult it was with jujitsu. Now, this is the only thing I do. This is the only thing I do for myself. Really, I have my family and I love them to death. I have my my students, my job, and I love my students and. I, I'm so thankful that I get to get to do this for a living. It's kind of it's kind of surreal. But jujitsu is my thing. It's who I am. It's what I do. And outside of jujitsu, I don't really have a lot of a lot of personal pursuits or time for anything else, frankly. So jujitsu is really it. And I haven't been able to do it this year. I haven't been able to do it. Now, my buddy that I was talking to, he's in his early 30s. I didn't really start jujitsu seriously until I was about 27. So I remember being in my early 30s. And man, I was a monster. Getting out of my 20s, again, still strong, had great cardio. I have okay cardio, but I was just a beast. I was like 186 pounds, just a tank. I would train every day day without fail, never had aches and pains. When I did get in, get injured, which was rare, I would ice the hell out of it and just be at training the next day. And sometimes I'd have to, I'd have to go to training with a cane because I couldn't walk very well, but I'd still go on the mats and get after it. Not saying it was the brightest thing, but it's, it's what I did. But I'm 38 now. I'm getting up there. And I was telling him like, yeah, look, it's, it's been a tough year, obviously. But something that happened with jiu-jitsu is I realized that I lost I lost one of my last really good years. Look, jiu-jitsu is not like it's not like golf, you know, where I could be 38 and then better at 39 and then better at 40. It's just not like that. Like you have an expiration date. Your body can only take so much wear and tear. You can only get pounded on so much before you start just getting worse. And there's a very common, there's a very common position where in life, when you're looking at promoting somebody, at times you'll look at how, how well they're doing. Say somebody's like a blue belt, but they're 50, you know, you look at how well they're doing and whether they're progressing or not. And you're kind of like, you know, they keep at it. They show up every day. They're not they're probably not going to get that much better. Like their technique will get a little bit better, but they're 50. Sometimes you say that because sometimes the guys, they really just, they aren't going to get that much better, but they deserve the respect of promotion. It's not a common thing, but it is something, it is a conversation that I've heard people have, and I've actually engaged in it as well. It's like, you know what, for that guy, you're right. You're right. He's not going to get that much better. And I look at that and I think about my position in jiu-jitsu with that. It's like I'm 38. Am I going to stop getting better? Did I just lose my last year of progress because I couldn't train? Am I even going to be able to recover from not training? Like You use a lot of weird small muscle groups and there's a lot of weird flexibility things. And in the absence of doing jiu-jitsu, you don't really... You don't really use those small muscle groups. You don't engage that kind of balance. And I started really thinking in this conversation about the potential for me never, never to actually recover. I may have had my best jujitsu year in my past. And that gave me pause. It really, 
it upset me. Just put it plain and simple. But I started thinking about not jujitsu. I started thinking about the other things in my life because what drove me from being upset with jujitsu is thinking about, gosh, should I have done more? When I had the chance, should I have done more? Should I have trained harder? Should I have trained longer? Should I have done more tournaments? Should I have pushed myself with different training partners? What could I have done to have made my time in jiu-jitsu before COVID to make that time better? And again, as soon as I thought about that stuff, I realized, man, what are you doing to make yourself better outside of jiu-jitsu? Because this is the thing. In life, I don't see myself as having the best years behind me. I'm 38. As far as life goes, I believe that 39 could be better. I believe that 40 could be better. My wife and I develop a deeper, more meaningful, rewarding friendship and partnership. And my children get older and, and more fun and more awesome. And they enter new stages of their life and it's great. There are all of these different things that I see in my life, my students getting smarter, me, me watching them go on to, to different universities and different, different uh, professions and, and everything. I see all of this as a potential for growth. And because of that, I don't have the urgency. I don't have the urgency like I would in jujitsu. I've known that this day was coming, so I've been pushing it really hard, and that gave me some kind of some kind of comfort to know, look, man, I mean, you pushed it pretty hard. There's not a whole lot you could have done at 36 and 37 to push it harder. I was competing professionally. I was training every single day, working out multiple times a day. Like I was pushing it really hard because I knew this day was coming. But why is it in my life? I don't think of it that way. I don't think of today as like, what am I doing to push today? Because under normal circumstances, I believe I could live to 70, 80, no problem. Okay, well, if I'm 38, I got several decades left. I'm not looking at it as like, this is your last year. It's all downhill in your life from here. I don't look at it that way. And what a mistake. What a mistake. What a foolish perspective. This could be it, man. I could be paralyzed tomorrow. I could be dead tomorrow. I could be done completely. And just to think that I had this foolish sense of comfort and stability and, and prediction with the rest of my life, well, things will keep getting better and, you know, I'll have opportunities. No. No. If 2020 has given us anything besides a headache and a desire to never, ever, ever be trapped at home again, if it has given us anything, it is to realize the fr uh, fragility with, with the system we work in. I mean, I was out buying 50-pound bags of rice and beans at the beginning of this. Look, we don't have next year. We don't have next decade. We don't have any of that. And how odd is it that I knew that in one aspect of my life and did not in others? I think most people see this. I think most people have this kind of cognitive dissonance where they, they understand in one aspect of life, maybe professionally, maybe they're like, look, I'm a sales guy. I can only push it so hard for so long. And then they miss it in the rest of their life. We need to stop viewing our life as compartmentalized, you know, different time frames. We're all coming to the end. Whether it's tomorrow, whether it's the next day, whether it's next decade, we're all coming to the end. And if we act like or pretend that that end is so far away, we will squander and look past the precious opportunities of today. If I could go back a year ago and tell myself to train as hard as I could, because I was going to be in the last last stages of my training, I would have said, great, I already know that. But if I could go back a year ago and tell myself, man, you better live as hard as you can. 
you better appreciate every day. That would have been a wake-up call. And thank God 2020 actually forced me to have that wake-up call. Because I'm 38 and my best days are in front of me. I'm Matt Todd. This is the engine that drives me. Go out and crush it. <laughs>